Welcome to Sports Connections with David Smale, a podcast that brings fun and interesting connections throughout sports. As an author and sports journalist, David has been interviewing fascinating people in sports for more than 40 years. Now here's your host, David Smale. Bill Snyder was named head football coach at Kansas State on November 24th, 1988, inheriting what many considered to be the worst college football program in America. He said at his introductory press conference, I think that the opportunity for the greatest turnaround in college football exists here today, and it's not one to be taken lightly. He didn't take it lightly. He resolutely, brick by brick, built the program into a regional and national power. After Coach Snyder won one of seven conference Coach of the Year awards, Oklahoma head coach Barry Switzer said he's not the coach of the year. He's not the coach of the decade. He's the coach of the century. I'm not going to list all his achievements because that would not leave any time for me to talk with Coach Snyder, but let me mention a few. When he earned his 40th victory, he became the winningest coach in K-State history, a mark he kept breaking until he retired with 215 victories, led the Wildcats to their first conference title in 69 years in 2003, their first bowl victory, part of 11 consecutive bowl appearances, their first 10-win season, their first 11-win season, something they achieved in four straight seasons, and six times in seven years, and their first number one national ranking energy that he used in his 27 years as the head coach at Kansas State. So we will. We'll ask a few football questions, but then we'll let Coach tell us about things he is passionate about today. Coach, welcome to Sports Connections. Well, thank you very much, David. Uh, Appreciate the opportunity to, to be with you. Let's start a little bit with football, as we as we discussed, and then we'll get into some things that uh, that you're passionate about now. When you retired following the 2005 season, you said you were ready to try something different, but then you came back. What did you do during those three years to occupy your time? Well, I, in, numerous things. Some of them, uh, a number of them that I had been invested in uh, prior to the retirement, uh, first and foremost, was uh, was family. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you try to do as much as you can because you, you know, been away from them for so, so long, uh, coaching, you know, whether it's at Kansas state or any place else is, mm-hmm. uh, very time consuming and takes away from family life. And, uh, obviously your, your family is extremely important. We have, uh, Sharon and I have, uh, five children and, uh, at the time at great, uh, eight grandchildren and, four grandchildren with two more on the way. So uh, we, uh, we had a, a substantial family. Mm-hmm. You know, fortunately, at that time, most were uh, in and around uh, the Manhattan area. As time has gone on, they're uh, off in other portions of the, of the world, of the country. Uh, we uh, uh, spent some time with... Uh, we didn't travel a great deal. Uh, we uh, took a couple of uh, Nike uh, trips, you know, which takes you into a variety of different uh, sure. uh, places in the in the world that uh, you may not have uh, seen before and uh, enjoy. And and it gave me an opportunity more me than Sharon, but it gave me an opportunity to visit with, you know, a lot of uh, coaches that. Uh, you know, that I've always admired over the, over the years and, uh, and be able to spend some time with, uh, with them. And I was invested uh, also in uh, uh, some entities uh, that I felt were productive for the state of Kansas, the mm-hmm. Kansas Mentors, the uh, Kansas Leadership Center uh, in uh, Wichita, uh, the uh, Kansas uh, Leadership Studies program here at uh, Kansas State. Uh, the uh, some of the youth groups here in the in the community, a variety of different things like sure. that that uh, were of uh, were of interest to me. Yeah. Okay, and um, you know, you mentioned early on in your time at Kansas State that that you came for the football program, and I might be messing that one up, but the part I remember specifically is you stayed for the people. And it sounds like all of those things were about 
helping people and developing skills that they had in them to help them improve? Well, you know, the, the people uh, in our program, the people in, uh, at the university, the people in the community, the people in the state and Kansas Taters, you know, all around the country have been very gracious to me and, and my family. And they were, mm-hmm. you know, at the outset, uh, way back in, uh, uh, 89. And, uh, there's a, a sense of loyalty that goes with that. And sure. I've always, I've always felt that. And, uh, you know, the, the reason for coming back, it, it took me a while when I retired the first time to get acclimated to it, yeah. uh, probably about six months. And uh, at that point in time, I was perfectly comfortable with it or for the most part. Uh, but there was a, uh, uh, you know, a charge, so to speak. Uh, a lot of people uh, asked me to consider, uh, Dr. Uh, John Weepold had asked me to return and uh, it, it took me a long time to say yes, uh, mm-hmm. quite a few months, in fact, but there was, uh, uh, which I greatly appreciated and was humbled by, uh, an outgrowth of uh, Kansas State people who <clears throat> asked that I do that. And so consequently, uh, visiting with my family and made the decision to, to do exactly that. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, Coach. I remember the, the press conference when you when it was announced that you were coming back and you appeared to a lot of us, I'm talking to my fellow media members who were there, you appeared to a lot of us that, that you appeared younger and more energetic. So how did those three years away rejuvenate you? Well, I probably got some sleep. That's, that's probably, <laughs> yeah. that probably helped a little bit. I, how much I don't, uh, I don't really know. Uh, I don't know. I didn't, uh, uh, I didn't feel uh, a great deal different. I did feel, you know, a little bit more rested and, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, uh, in general, you know, football, uh, the, uh, the aspect of having to deal with so many aspects of it, which most people are are unfamiliar with. Right. uh, There, there is so much there that uh, it's, it's so time consuming and it's kind of nerve wracking sometimes. And, or I say sometimes, often. Yeah. Uh, so it's uh, there is consistently something twenty four seven that is weighing on your mind, and so that uh, that kind of you know uh, takes its course and wears on you a little bit, and so that that uh, didn't exist during those uh, three years. So you know it, why I, I chose to invite it back, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> and you, when you came back, a lot of it's not totally um, uncommon for a coach to come back, but generally when coaches come back, they come back for one or two or three years. You came back, if my math is correct, for 11 more seasons. Is that correct? I'm not sure exactly what it was, but uh, pretty close. Um, how, how were you different as a head coach the second time around? Well, I'm, I'm not sure that, uh, that I was uh, different. Uh, I've never seen myself as, uh, as different. doesn't mean that I'm not uh, or, or wasn't uh, open to change mm-hmm. you know, because I've always been open to change if it's the right change. Right. Uh, so uh, I, I don't know that I was a great deal different. I think as it got towards the last uh, year or two, uh, there were times that, uh, that I felt as though maybe I wasn't quite as invested as I needed to be, or as I had been over the, over mm-hmm. the years. Um, it seemed, it seemed like from a, you know, one level removed or maybe two levels removed that you delegated more the second time around. Is that fair? Uh, that's a fair statement. It is. Yes. Uh, and it gradually evolved into that as we, uh, as we started the second tenure. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's interesting. The, the thing that other than turning a, let's be honest, bad program into a very, very good program, the thing that you are probably best known for uh, is your work ethic and your meticulous attention to detail. Where did that come from? Well, um, 
I think probably my mother. I've always, uh, uh, I've always thought that uh, it was uh, something that I, I possessed at a at a young age, I believe. And uh, my mother was a, uh, you know, I was an only child, single parent home. My mother worked uh, six days a week, twelve hours a day, uh, saved every penny she could to put me through college. Uh, she was, uh, like, as I said, you know, a hard worker, mm -hmm. uh, demanding, uh, caring, uh, amazing, amazing woman. So I, uh, she uh, taught me, you know, an awful lot, I think, mm -hmm. in a variety of different ways that were things that were beneficial in my life and things that were beneficial in my career field. One of the things I, I um, am releasing a, a podcast <laughs> later today uh, with Steve Miller, who hired you. And yeah. I talked to him about what he saw in you and he couldn't pinpoint anything, but he just talked about, uh, and I'm not going to give away the details. So hopefully people will tune into that one as well. But um, he talked about specific things that just led him to believe that you had the, I don't want to say toughness, but the, the tenacity to attack what was wrong at Kansas State, that you weren't going to just settle for, well, this is as good as we can get. We're not going to try any harder. <clears throat> he saw something that you just, <clears throat> pardon me, that you, you just weren't going to settle for anything but your best effort and the best effort of the people around you. Uh, do you remember those encounters with Steve? Well, I, I, I do. I remember a few of them. I remember uh, numerous conversations with Steve in which, you know, he'd ask if I would be interested in the position. And I indicated we were, we still had, uh, when this started, we still had uh, maybe three games to go at uh, University of Iowa. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't going to interfere with you know, the program at that time. So I indicated that, uh, you know, that I wasn't interested on numerous occasions. And uh, finally, uh, you know, one day, uh, Steve Miller and Jim Epps uh, appeared at our door in uh, Iowa City, Iowa, and uh, came in and visited for an extensive period of time. And I continued to say no. And uh, Steve, Steve asked if uh, we had an extra bedroom. Uh, <laughs> Speaking of persistent, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Steve, Steve was all of that. He was, yeah. he was the, uh, uh, the worldwide leader in persistence, but uh, he, uh, he finally, uh, and they finally left and uh, called again. And I said, I would, I would come and visit. They, they, while they were at, at our home, they said, you, you don't have to do anything. You have the job if you'd like the job, you know. And uh, they had probably already had 25 people turn them down, I would think. So uh, they were, uh, it was easy for them to make the offer. Uh, so I did visit and, uh, spent some time with, uh, a large number of people. I, you're, you're familiar with the legend room in mm -hmm. Brantwich and that room was full of people uh, from all walks of campus life and, uh, all sharing, you know, why they thought it was appropriate for me to, to be there and, I, I eventually asked uh, John Weefold if he would, uh, or Steve, one of the two, I don't remember, uh, you know, if they would provide me uh, a person to take me out onto the campus and leave me for an hour and then uh, come back and get me. And a nice young lady drove me on the campus, let me off. Uh, came back in an hour to pick me up during the time I was there. And this is, you know, this is in the winter time and there's mm -hmm. snow on the ground and it's, it's, you know, freezing temperatures. And I stood on the campus and stopped people as they were moving across the campus and uh, stopped and asked if I could ask some questions. 
Uh, I didn't tell them who I was or why mm -hmm. I was there, and they didn't know who I was. Uh, and it was, uh, it was, it was amazing. I asked questions about the university, about the community, about the football program, about the athletic program, about students, about faculty, uh, you know, anything and everything that I could think of. And after an hour, a young lady picked me up, took me back to Bramlage and, uh, I told John Weep all the time, I said, I, uh, I need to go home and spend some time with my wife and family and, and talk about this, but I, I believe I'm interested. And he said, why, why is that? And I said, uh, he said, what, you know, what changed your mind? And I said, the people. And it was about all those people that I visited with. There might've been 60 or 70 people and nobody, not one of them got in a hurry because it was cold. Uh, no one said, excuse me, uh, I need to get, you know, here or there. And, and I was shivering and so were they uh, for the most part, but they all took whatever time it, uh, it took and uh, answered questions very honestly for me. And I, I assumed very honestly, and I, I appreciated the people. And that's where that phrase came from. You know, we came because of the people, stayed because of the people, and returned because of the people. <clears throat> and I appreciate that. I had heard that story obviously many times before, but it's always good to hear. And I, and if if, if you remember the names of those sixty or seventy people, I want to send them thank you notes for bringing you to to Kansas State. <clears throat> um, let's get into some of the programs that you helped develop. Some of them. Be, you know, during your first retirement and many uh, since then that you've, that have become your primary focus. So let's start with Kansas Mentors. And I'm basically going to introduce the, a, a program and let you run with it. So start with Kansas Mentors. Well, uh, Kathleen Sebelius, uh, I mean, there's a number of stories there, became a good friend, uh, Sharon and I, and uh, she, uh, she asked me uh, about initiating uh, that program. And the desire was to uh, benefit uh, mentoring, you know, throughout the state of, uh, state of Kansas. Uh, and it was, it was my goal uh, during that period of time to uh, develop uh, mentoring programs uh, in every school system in the state of Kansas. Hmm. Uh, we, uh, and, and uh, the, uh, the initial uh, thought behind Kansas Mentors was just to be able to go out and assist, you know, all the mentoring groups within the state. Uh, I think we had uh, association with uh, probably about 250 uh, mentoring groups uh, at, at when we initiated cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, it is, uh, uh, there's, there's so many wonderful groups out there in the state of Kansas that, that truly uh, assist young people in their development and their growth, uh, help working parents, uh, et cetera. Uh, the uh, uh, number of uh, number of uh, schools that we were able to put a program in, uh, and and it was their work, the school's work, but we were providing mm -hmm. uh, a method by which they could develop mentoring within their schools and. And it began to grow a great deal. And, and again, we didn't want to interfere with, uh, you know, boys and girls clubs and right. the big sisters and all the other mentoring groups that existed. But <clears throat> we did want to be able to help. And so that was the uh, that was the intent. And that was the direction that uh, that we took. OK, um, the next one is the uh, Kansas State University School of Leadership. Uh, and, and you mentioned to me Snyder Leadership Fellows. Is that one thing? Uh, is, that, is the Snyder Leadership Fellows part of the Kansas State School of Leadership? Uh, it is. Okay. Uh, 
uh, has just been developed in maybe the last uh, four or five years. Uh, <clears throat> the leadership school really is significant to me. I was involved with it. Uh, uh, oh, uh, many years ago, you know, now maybe 15 uh, years ago or so. And uh, there was a gentleman uh, here on campus at the time, Bob Shoup. Uh, and so he and uh, another wonderful lady uh, were teaching leadership classes. Mm -hmm. And they, they were teaching the classes in a uh, two bedroom home that sat directly across from the campus. Hmm. And uh, I think the largest class maybe had 12 students in it. I don't recall exactly. Uh, but they uh, felt strongly about uh, the development of a leadership program. And uh, they initiated it by writing a book and they authored the book, uh, Bill Snyder's Leadership Lessons. And uh, I, going through the interviews for that book, I, I really uh, developed a, a strong interest. Uh, and we didn't have a leadership college or leadership program at the university as mm -hmm. such at the time. And uh, the two authors wanted to develop that. And so they began to promote, and I tried to assist them with that. And eventually the outgrowth was uh, the uh, School of Leadership at Kansas State, and, and then its own structure, and uh, then the largest enrollment of any major field of study in uh, at, at Kansas State University. So it was really a great deal of growth, and my feeling was always, as was theirs, that you know we didn't want a major field of study in leadership. Uh, very few people would, you know, move in that direction. But what we did want was a minor in leadership because everybody, regardless of what your career field is, right. everybody can uh, profit from that. And certainly for a, a student graduating from college, it's a, it's a great look on your transcript, you know, to have a minor in, in leadership. So that was the direction of that uh, of that program and obviously the outgrowth of it has been amazing the uh, uh the, the school of leadership studies uh then uh developed uh came to me and asked about uh, having a program uh, defined as the uh, snyder uh, leadership fellows program and uh, it was to bring uh, together, you know, a group of uh, somewhere in the vicinity of 45 to 50 uh, graduating or two graduate seniors uh, who had uh, invested in the leadership studies and who uh, had the capacity to uh, create quality leadership within communities that they would move into. Uh, so it was just to enhance, you know, leadership mm -hmm. skills and and find a direction to utilize that that leadership and the capacity to lead in communities and and try to encourage, you know, each of them to uh, to settle in there wherever they went after graduation to settle into leadership roles within their communities, you know, in a variety of different ways and hoping. Uh, that uh, a, a large number of them, which was the case, but a large number of them would go into Kansas communities mm -hmm. to help with the leadership in, uh, in the state of Kansas. You know, the state of Kansas population was going down and uh, some small communities were beginning to dry up, as you uh, right. would say, et cetera. So that was the nature of, uh, of that program and still is. <laughs> I'm sensing a theme coach that leadership is important to you. <laughs> um, and you, we've known each other for about 30 years. And I've always admired that about you is that you, one, you, you never sought the credit yourself, <clears throat> but you sought to develop whether it was through these programs 
or through your football team, you sought to develop leaders. You didn't go after the five-star recruits who thought they knew everything. You went after the two and three-star recruits that had the work ethic that you reflected and had the, that you knew were coachable and you could teach leadership to them. So I'm thinking of, of guys like Brent Venables who came and became a leader under, under you. And there's so many Brent Venables out there. He's well known because of his success as a coach. But is that fair to say that you sought, when you were recruiting players, you sought leaders and coachable players more than, maybe more than talent? Well, you know, that, that was important to me. You know, I think when we initially came, uh, it was uh, our sense, I was kind of convinced that we should go after the, the very best athletes that are out there. And so, you know, five stars and four stars were, uh, you know, the interest. But uh, what I found out very quickly is five stars and four stars weren't very interested in Kansas State University. Right. And we were spending an awful lot of time uh, attempting to uh, embrace young people that just didn't have an interest in uh, Kansas State and were interested in the extremely high profile uh programs. So uh, I've, you know, referred back to what has always been important to me. And, uh, you know, certainly we want fine athletes. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, what was important to me is uh, that in addition, they needed to possess a value system that was extremely important in uh, growing up and becoming successful and providing leadership and uh, being a, uh, a strong representative of themselves, their family, the football program, the university, the community, et cetera. Um, and speaking, <clears throat> excuse me, speaking of, of leadership, I know you are close friends with former U.S. Senator Pat Roberts. Talk about that relationship and, and his retirement and how you got involved with with basically his Senate campaign and, and the work that he did in the U.S. Senate? <clears throat> well, uh, Pat, uh, I, uh, Pat, being a case stater and uh, obviously being uh, a major uh, helper for the state of Kansas mm -hmm. uh, was... Uh, you know, back in Kansas, a great deal from uh, Washington. Uh, he and I ended up at the same events sometimes for mm -hmm. Kansas State uh, and got to know each other. Uh, he was a avid uh, and is an avid football fan and would always come to the games and would always stop by uh, to speak. And we'd spend time together and, uh, and talk and got to know each other quite well and communicate on the uh, on the telephone and uh, texting, etc., and uh, so you know we just became good long-distance friends in that respect. And when he was here, obviously we'd spend time uh, spend time together. Uh, just uh, you know, he and his wife both uh, you know really really special people, and I was uh, uh, so proud of all the things. Certainly that he you know embraced our program and would speak to our players and spend time with uh, with them as well. Uh, but, you know, all of the things that he did for the state, uh, for the people of the state, people of Kansas State, uh, and obviously for our nation as, uh, as well. And then another, another friend you developed through, through the relationship with K-State is uh, K-State alum and former PGA golfer Jim Colbert. Uh, unless you've taken it up recently, you don't play golf. So how did that relationship develop? <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, I, I met, if I remember correctly, I met Jim uh, uh, when I was with Ernie Barrett. And we were out, I want to say it may have been, it was probably in Las Vegas. And uh, <clears throat> Jim had, uh, you know, some courses out, uh, out in Las Vegas. And uh, Ernie was on a fundraising tour and I was with him uh, not for fundraising I've always 
avoided that. Uh, but uh, I, we, I guess we had lunch together, if I remember correctly now. And uh, that was the first time that I met, uh, met Jim, as I recall. And we took a liking to each other. And uh, so when Jim would come into Manhattan, he would always, uh, because they, they still have a, a place here mm -hmm. over the hills, and he would uh, uh, come and uh, we'd, we'd visit and he'd stay, uh, you know, half the year out here. And so I'd spend time with him on a regular basis and with he and, and Marcia. And uh, he always invited us out to uh, Palm Desert where uh, they live and uh, have another home. And we would go on occasion, not, not too often, but mm -hmm. on occasion. And I would just came to came to know each other quite well, became very good friends, still are to this day. And, and it's interesting. Um, a lot of people don't know this. I'm sure you do that that. Kansas State football <clears throat> is why Jim Colbert is is a Kansas State alum mm -hmm. rather than Oklahoma State. He had he had agreed to attend Oklahoma State on a golf scholarship and they were one of the <clears throat> one of the great golf programs in the country, but he also wanted to play football and the golf coach there said no. And so he came to Kansas State because the golf coach here and I don't remember who that was said yes, you can play football and he said he he went to practice for a about a day, if I remember correctly, and realized that golf didn't hurt nearly as much as football. So he stayed and played only golf uh, at Kansas State. Do you guys ever talk football when you're together? Uh, we do. Uh, and I like to talk about his, his career, you know. <laughs> but he really was, a, was a, an exceptional high school player. You know, he did awfully well. And he's... Uh, uh, he enjoyed that, you know, playing the quarterback in the high school. Uh, but uh, obviously, uh, Goff is, uh, he made the right decision. Let me yes. Put it that way, <laughs> quite obviously. And I, and I did, Jim. Uh, Jim uh, uh, encouraged me to, you know, to play golf. And uh, I did very, very seldom, but on occasion, I would, uh, I would play. I I was out in uh, one of the stories. I was in uh, Sharon and I were in uh, uh, out to Colbert's uh, one time, and uh, so I told Colbert. Uh, I said, "Okay, let's let's go out to the driving range, and and you teach me the fine points of this game." Mm -hmm. And. Uh, we went out and I think we were like four or five hours, something like that, you know, and, and it was because I wanted more, you know, teach me more, teach mm -hmm. me more, teach me sure. more. We kept going, we kept going, we kept going and wore Jim out. You know, he, <laughs> he, he loves to, to tell that, uh, tell that story. But uh, the story I tell is he's not a very good teacher because I'm a horrible golfer. <laughs> All right. And, and we want to get back into the, the last program that I uh, want to talk to you about, the Kansas Leadership Center. And there's that word leadership. Again, talk about the Kansas Leadership Center. Well, that, again, was uh, a product of uh, uh, Kathleen Sebelius, and she wanted to put a uh, center together uh, to uh, enhance uh, the leadership within each community uh, in the state of Kansas. And uh, that would be the, uh, oh, the, the goal or the direction of a leadership center, which is presently in uh, uh, Wichita. Mm -hmm. uh, and she put... Uh, you know, some, some quality people. She put me, uh, I, I, when I say quality people, uh, in charge of, uh, of uh, the directorship of that. And uh, I was, uh, she asked me to be on the board of directors. Uh, and I, you know, accepted that opportunity. And uh, we have over the years and and i'm not as invested in it now 
But uh, over the years, uh, they have done a marvelous job <clears throat> of, of being able to do exactly what the intent was and go into communities and send groups into communities to help when invited right. uh, uh, to help each community de and develop and enhance their leadership programs, you know, in a, in a variety of different capacities. And it's been, you know, I think highly successful over the, over the years. That's great. Um, coach, I know you're very proud of all five of your kids. Those of us who have followed your career as football coach know that Sean was on your team, either as a player or as a coach, if not for all 27 years, most of them. Uh, just talk about having him on your staff, having him as, first of all, as a player on your team and then on your staff. And then tell us about how he's enjoying his role at USC. Well, uh, Sean actually was in the program longer than I was uh, as a player and uh, administrator and a, and a coach. Uh, and I gave him a, an awful lot of responsibility. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so he, uh, you know, developed the skills of understanding what all, you know, a head coach has to do and the numerous <clears throat> responsibilities. And he, uh, he helped, you know, immensely with, uh, with that, uh, obviously became, uh, our special teams coordinator and was a national special teams coordinator, I think, uh, uh on two separate, several, uh, several different uh, organizations recognized him, but uh, in two separate years. Mm -hmm. uh, and and it, if I can interrupt you, I mean, the, the, the trademark of Kansas state, every, every time they get a, even today, um, under Coach Kleiman, every time they they get a non-offensive touchdown, we start quoting those stats that K-State leads the nation since, you know, pick a year with non-offensive touchdowns. So <clears throat> how much of that credit for the special teams, punt returns and kickoff returns, goes to Sean, and how much will you accept? Well, uh, Sean ran our, our special teams. I mean, that was his – uh, responsibility and obviously he did quite well with it as <clears throat> as he has done at uh, at USC you know two of those ball games that they won at USC were the result of uh, of special teams plays you know that created the opportunity for uh, come from behind victories mm -hmm. so he's uh, you know not only a, a good person but uh, very productive in, in what he does very fine coach so is, is he enjoying his time at USC? Well, he is. He's back in uh, Manhattan as we speak. Uh, came back for Christmas and will be here until after the uh, new year. Uh, but he and Wanda are uh, enjoying their time out there. He, uh, <clears throat> I'm a little envious. He's, uh, <clears throat> he's leasing a home out there, but he's leasing a place that overlooks Catalina Island and the ocean. And oh, so wow. he, see all that from his backyard and uh so they're enjoying that part of it and he likes uh uh the people that he's with at uh usc and enjoying the, the program and they've given him you know, good responsibility and he's uh, i think taking advantage of the opportunity well P please pass along my my regards to sean uh, i've always enjoyed visiting with him and he's always been uh very gracious uh to me as have you just talk about the rest of your kids, what your other kids are doing. I know you're very proud of all of them. Well, I, I am immensely proud. I don't think anybody could be as fortunate as, uh, as we have been to have uh, the kind of children and grandchildren that, uh, that we have. Uh, our next oldest is uh, Shannon. Uh, Shannon uh, lives just outside of Dallas now. Mm -hmm. uh, as uh, uh, <clears throat> She is. Uh, she has one uh, one daughter, uh, Sydney, who happens to be uh, at Michigan State. Uh, her husband is a uh, uh, graduate assistant at uh, uh, Michigan State, and so unfortunately, he's getting into you know the football world. I'm trying to encourage <laughs> him to go on and uh, do some other things. He has some skill in some other areas, but. Uh, <clears throat> Shannon is, uh, uh, you know, a very, uh, 
productive individual. She's she's really gotten into uh, playing golf and playing tennis. She actually was on a tennis team, uh, an adult tennis team down in the Dallas area, and they travel around and play. And she's uh, loving uh, loving that. Uh, Meredith is our third oldest. She also lives in uh, Texas, out in uh, uh, Quitman, uh, Texas, which is uh, east, close to uh, Tyler. Uh, her husband, unfortunately, again, is a, a football coach and athletic <laughs> director uh, in the high schools. And uh, they have uh, three children. Uh, Meredith was a young lady that was injured in the automobile accident. Right. And I couldn't be more proud. And you asked earlier about, you know, uh, learning about hard work and determination. You know, uh, uh, Meredith, you know, refreshed, not that the others haven't, but in a special way, she uh, certainly brought that front and center as well. Extremely hard worker. She uh, owns and operates uh, her own business. Uh, at one time, she owned and operated three businesses. Wow. <clears throat> now she has one. They own a, owned a substantial amount of property, which uh, she saw too, since her husband was coaching, uh, uh, to take care of it and then raise three, three children, all of them rugrats and uh, would uh, drive you bananas, and she managed to uh, to you know raise them and their their amazing amazing young grandchildren. Uh, Ross is our next uh, oldest. Uh, Ross played for us here at uh, Kansas mm-hmm. State, as did Sean. Uh, Ross, uh, you know, has uh, lived a uh, good for outside of. Uh, of uh, Iowa City and Manhattan uh, lived a number of years in uh, Kansas City and worked in Kansas City and decided to uh, uh, come back to uh, Manhattan, uh, lives here in Manhattan now. He has a, a daughter, Alexis, who is a, uh, <clears throat> a student at Kansas State. Every one of our children went through Kansas State uh, and every grandchild of college age is in the process, has gone through or is in the process of going through Kansas State. Uh, so it's uh, truly uh, you know, been a K-State family. Uh, our youngest is uh, Whitney. Uh, Whitney uh, was an all-American uh, equestrian rider at Kansas State. Uh, she went into uh, teaching taught in the elementary school here in uh, Manhattan. Uh, and uh, uh, she's married. Her husband is uh, uh, Micah Heideman, who is a uh, fireman, okay. uh, a very productive fireman here in uh, Manhattan. Has moved himself up the ladder. Uh, Whitney taught until she was with child. And uh, so we now have a... Uh, uh, grand, another granddaughter uh, who's 18 months, I think, right now, and Whitney has chosen to stay home, so she uh, stepped aside from from teaching for a while. So there, uh, and there's a lot more to yeah. each of them than uh, than that, but that's a quick overview. Well, thank you for the update. Now, the last time you and I were together face to face was probably a year or so ago, and there was a, a young lady who works for the athletic department. Was that Ross's daughter? Uh, that is, uh, Sydney. Yeah. I don't remember her name, but she was, you know, she was, she let us in and, and we were going to have an event there. And then you came later and, and I was remarking to her about how comfortable she was with legendary coach, Bill Snyder. And she said, well, he's my grandfather, (laughs) very gracious young lady, but was that, that, was that, that, that's Shannon's daughter, Sydney. Uh Okay. Okay. Well, the last thing I want to ask you about, Coach, is uh, our mutual friend, Scott Fritchen, worked for uh, Powercat Illustrated and GoPowerCat.com. You guys are working on a book together that's going to be coming out later in 2021. Just tell us briefly about that book, what the, what the topic is. I'm guessing it has something to do with leadership, uh, but tell us about what that book's about. Well, uh, in all reality, it's, uh, uh, it's the rest of the story. You know, there's been a number of books out, but uh, they haven't encompassed everything that uh, mm-hmm. has taken place in my life. So really, it's uh, uh, the rest of my life story. 
Do you have a title yet? What is that? Uh, well, I'm hoping that's what it'll be, the rest of the story. Uh, so pa Paul Harvey doesn't own the rights to, <laughs> to that phrase then? Uh, well, that's something that a uh, publishing company will decide, yeah. Yeah, and that's going to be published uh, through Triumph Books out of Chicago. And um, what we'll do once, once we find, I, I, I'm friends with people at Triumph Books, and if there is a, um, a place to pre-order that, I think it's probably a little early now, but we'll add it uh, to the podcast um, after the fact so people can order that book uh, through Triumph Books. Well, Coach, it is always a pleasure to visit with you. You've always been very gracious with your time. I appreciate it. I think the first time we spent a great deal of time was uh, back in the summer of 94 uh, after uh, K-State's first bowl game under, under your leadership. Um, and I, we spent a week, basically three hours a day, five days for that week. Uh, and I got to know you much better and got to appreciate you. And I always look back on that fondly and I appreciate the time that uh, we've had together today. Well, thank you very much, David. I enjoyed our, our time together. and. Once again, wish you a, a wonderful new year. And uh, everybody's looking to 2021 just to get away from 2020, I think. <laughs> but uh, it's uh, 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 been an interesting time, to say the, say the least. But I wish you well. Thank you very much, Coach. Thanks for listening to Sports Connections with David Smale. Make sure to subscribe, follow, and rate the show from your favorite podcast platform. You can learn more about David Smale and his work by visiting davidsmalebooks.com. Don't forget to join us weekly for new episodes. Until next time.